set of components of a Power BI data model that we need to review are the model properties. These properties control what you see in the report designer when you're building a report, and they affect what Power BI does with the data that you add to a visualization. First, each object in the model, that is the tables and columns, which are known as fields in the model, each object has a name and a description. Although I recommend renaming objects in the Power BI query editor, you can also rename them in the model directly. Descriptions are helpful to provide additional information about an object if the name itself is not particularly descriptive, but that's typically only for models that you intend to publish and share with others in the Power BI service, not for one-time models that you create for yourself. Next, another option to consider is whether to hide objects. You might consider hiding tables or columns so that the end result is a simpler model to navigate. That way, people don't have to sift through long lists of fields to find what they need to add to a report. Sometimes, Sometimes you might have tables or fields in your model that are used for specific purposes behind the scenes, but are not used for reporting directly. For example, you might have fields that are used only to set up relationships or to compute column values. And in those cases, you can simply hide those objects to keep them out of your way. Setting a default sort order for values in a column can also be useful. Power BI wants to sort text alphabetically and numbers in numerical order, but sometimes you need to override that. Our model in this course does not have any columns that require us to set the sort order, so I'll just make you aware that it's an option. You might need it when you have columns that you don't want to sort alphabetically, such as months in the year, or maybe you have product sizes like small, medium, and large. Then we have data types. Now, I prefer to confirm and adjust data types in the Power BI Query Editor, but in the case of calculations, you still need the ability to configure data types in the data model itself. Now, you definitely should check the formatting of numeric columns so that you can read values more easily as percentages or with the correct currency symbols or with commas as thousand separators. Another formatting task is to set the desired number of decimal places. And then last, Power BI defaults to summing up numeric values, but you may need a different option, such as getting the average, or maybe you want no summarization at all. For example, you might have a column containing the year, which is a numeric value, but it does not make sense to sum those years up to get a grand total. So in that case, you can disable the default summarization. Let's go through our model and check out the various properties that we can configure. Of course, any object, whether it is a table or a field in the table has names that we can configure. So if you prefer to rename anything within the model, you just right click and select the rename option on the menu and then and you can type in a new name if you like here. I've already done all the renaming that I want to do inside of the Power BI Query Editor. 
there are also properties that you can configure where you can add in a description. And notice that there is a description inside of the description field here that says this will appear in properties that you can configure here. where you can add in a description. And notice that there is a description inside of the description field here that says this will appear in tooltips when you hover over the field. So I might say something like this table contains data from 2014 and later. Then when I close this and I hover over that table name, you can see the description display. Now there there are things that I would like to hide. So I'm going to hide by clicking the ellipsis button to the right of each field name, select hide, and that field goes goes away. So we'll just go through and hide identifiers that those are not useful to me inside of a report. I'll hide movie ID from genre. And I'll hide movie ID from movies. For data types, everything should be configured properly. For example, release year, if we go to the modeling tab, types, everything should be configured properly. For example, release year. If we go to the modeling tab, should be a whole number, which is correct. Duration is a whole number. So I could click the comma as an example from a formatting perspective. Now with values like durations, where I think the sum of duration is not something that is of interest to me, but maybe average duration is, this is where I can adjust the default summarization. And I'm going to change this to average because I would like to know average duration. Now, if you recall, we have release year. Remember that this is a numeric value, but it is not something that I want to see totaled. So don't summarize. And then when I add release year to a new visualization, we can see that it does not sum up those values. They're treated as if they were text strings. And then when we add duration, we can see the averages are correctly computed. So those are the types of properties that you will commonly find yourself configuring in your data model to control the behavior of the individual fields and how they display in our visualizations.
The last big step in the development workflow for a Power BI data model is the addition of calculations. There are two types of calculations that you can add, a calculated column and a measure. Either type gets added to a specific table, and both are created by using DAX expressions. But that's where the similarity between the two ends. By the way, DAX is an abbreviation. for data analysis expressions. which is the formula language used by Power BI and also by SQL Server Analysis Services tabular models. On the one hand, DAX can seem simple and straightforward if you have a lot of experience with Excel functions, but it's also easy to get tripped up because the behavior of DAX functions is different from Excel. Excel works with cells and ranges in a worksheet, whereas DAX works with tables and columns. In this module, I'll only be giving you a brief introduction to DAX, but Pluralsight does have another course that goes deeper into DAX that I encourage you to view later when you're ready to advance your skills. But let's get back to the difference between calculated columns and measures. A calculated column resolves a DAX expression as a scalar value value. That is, Power BI calculates a value for every single row in a column. And then it stores these values in memory and in the PBIX file when you save and close the Power BI desktop application. Consequently, the size of the Power BI model is directly affected by calculated columns. The more rows of data included in a calculated column, the bigger the data model is in size and the more memory it requires to run on your computer. By contrast, measures are resolved as aggregate values. If you're just using a measure by itself in a report, say the total count of movies in the file, the value gets calculated and displayed in the report as a single data point. However, that does not affect the model size. Only the expression for the calculation is saved in your file, and the final result displays in your report. Or maybe you want to show the movie count by year, so the calculation is performed for each year. If there are five years, you get five results, plus a grand total. So six calculation operations are performed, but there's only one formula for the calculation that is saved in the PBIX file. Now let's add a calculated column to our model. In this case, We'll go to the model We'll go to the data tab of the designer, and I'll point to the movies table where we're going to add this calculated column and I'll click the ellipsis and select new column. We can see a new column gets added to the table here and a formula bar displays where it's assigned the name column which I can replace 
with a new name. In this case, I will call this column movie URL. And then the formula requires that I use an equal sign to define my DAX expression. We're going to create a simple calculated column here where I'm going to concatenate static text with the value found in each current row for movie ID. The static text is the beginning of the URL that we use to find these movies on replace with a new name. In this case, I will call this column movie URL. And then the formula requires that I use an equal sign to define my DAX expression. We're going to create a simple calculated column here where I'm going to concatenate static text. Each current is the beginning of the URL that we use to find these movies on the imdb.com website. And then I'm going to concatenate or combine that static text with the current value of movie ID. And to concatenate, I use an ampersand. And then I can reference the column value by using, by typing the open bracket Power BI displays the other for me and double click. On a column and Power BI finishes out that for me. And when I click the check is the column definition. And then Power BI resolves that expression, as you can see, in every single row that we have in this table. Notice also the icon that appears to the left of the field in our fields list to indicate that this is a calculated column. Now let's create a measure. I can click the ellipsis button here next to movies, select new measure. And again, our formula bar above the table prompts us with the generic name of measure, which I'm going to replace with movie count, then an equal sign, and then I can start typing the name of a DAX function that I want to use that can summarize. Values from my data table. When I start typing, for example, count, IntelliSense displays all of the possible DAX functions that include 
the text count in them. In this case, I want to use count rows. And notice as I use the arrow to navigate through the different functions, a description of the function displays as well as part of the IntelliSense. When I select count rows by double clicking it, the IntelliSense shows me below the formula bar how to use that function. In this case, we include the name of a table in the parentheses that enclose the argument for the count rows function. I can start typing the name of the table, which is movies, and we can see both functions containing the string mo as well as the table. If I type another letter here, we can see the list filters down to just the table name of movies. I can then double click on that to add it to the expression. And then I need to type a closing parentheses to finish out the stacks expression. When I click the commit button, the expression is validated. It is added to my fields list with a icon to indicate that it's a measure. As you can see, it's different from the icon that represents a calculated column. And now I can use that in a visualization. For example, I can click on this chart that we have on the page already. You can remove duration and add movie count. And you can see that we have now the counts of movies by year, but notice that these values are difficult to read because they're over 1000. So I can select movie count in the field list, click the comma to apply formatting, And now when I review each of the columns in the visualization, I can see the proper formatting also applied to the movie count. So that's how we set up measures. By working on the components of the Power BI data model, we're now set up to officially build your first report. But to get to this point, we reviewed the difference between the work we did in the Power BI Query Editor with the work that we needed to do in the data model itself. Then we went deeper into the specifics of the data model, starting with the definition of table relationships. Sometimes Power BI creates table relationships, and sometimes you have to do it, or you have to correct what Power BI created. Regardless, without proper table relationships, you will not see correct calculations in your report. So this is one of the most important tasks that you need to perform. Then to polish up the model even further, we reviewed the various properties in the data model that affect what you see in the report. We learned how to update names and descriptions of objects, how to hide objects, configure data types, set the formatting of numeric values, and we learned about the effect of default summarization. And then to wrap up our data model development process, we added calculations to the data model, specifically calculated columns, which are persisted in the data model, and also measures, which are calculated only when you add the measure to a report. So as you can see, there's a lot of work that goes into getting your data ready for reporting. And now that we have all of that work accomplished, we're finally going to build that report in the next module. Hi, I'm Stacia Varga. The time has finally come to learn how to create reports in Power BI. After all, the title of this course is Building Your First Report in Power BI. 
In the previous two modules, we had to work our way through the prerequisites for reporting in Power BI, getting our data loaded, and ensuring the model is set up to properly support reporting. I'm going to start this module by describing the report development workflow at a high level. We don't just grab data and fling it onto a report page. There's a process to follow, albeit a simple process. Of course, the primary task of report development is to add report elements to a page. So we'll spend some time learning about the different types of report elements that Power BI currently supports. Remember that this is always subject to change due to the pace at which Power BI gets updated. But generally, report elements don't go away. The existing ones get improved and new ones get added. Power BI also provides a lot of different ways to customize the look and feel of your report as well. The extent of customization depends on which report element you're working on, so we'll explore the range of options that you have for the different types of elements. And then we'll wrap up the module by publishing the report to the Power Power BI service. We'll see what actually gets published and how you can use the report as a basis for building a Power BI dashboard. So let's get 